हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू द चैनल सो टुडे वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू सॉल्व एनी एसक्यूएल क्वेश्चंस इन जनरल आई सॉल्व एसक्यूएल क्वेश्चन ऑन माय यूट्यूब चैनल बट टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस डेटा इंजीनियरिंग रोड मैप टुडे इज गोइंग टू बी वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग वीडियो बिकॉज वी विल ऑल्सो डिस्कस हाउ टू मूव फ्रॉम डेटा एनलिस्ट और सो नॉन टेक्निकल रोल्स टू टेक्निकल रोल लाइक डेटा इंजीनियरिंग राइट सो so watch this video till end you will get lot of inputs you know how to proceed in this field and how to succeed and today to talk about this we have with us goyal saab uh, so deepak goyal is very famous on linkedin right he has around 150000 followers he posts there almost every day he is azure data engineer guru he he talks about guidance career guidance he also talks about productivity and lot of other things if you don't follow him on linkedin go i will put his linkedin profile in the in the description box follow him you will get lot of inputs every day in your linkedin okay so with that welcome welcome deepak uh let's start with your quick introduction let's not make it boring just quick introduction and then we will move on to the road map thank you so much ankit yeah <laughs> for inviting me on this podcast and sharing my own knowledge with all of your audience thank you so much for bringing me in my pleasure deepak yeah yeah, yeah deepak you can just give your quick introduction okay. sure so yeah hello everyone uh, as uh, ankit has already talked about little bit about me so i am deepak goel uh, i am having 15 years of experience in it industry and i am someone who has worked into this big data industry from almost 2012 so like i have seen hadoop i have seen spark and i have seen all those cloud advancement in front of my own eyes so i am someone who is into this big data and cloud field for almost a, more than a decade so i love to talk a lot uh, i love to write blogs i love to talk uh, make podcast i love to make videos courses and everything around the big data and cloud so if you are someone who is enthusiastic about making a career into a data field and you are looking some looking for help in that probably you can find my lot of content very useful in making your career progression great thanks deepak for the introduction so deepak let's start the video so basically lot of people come to me and say what is the right road map to become data engineer right nowadays in data engineering field also if you see there are lot of technologies around mm. we have aws we have spark we have hadoop we have azure we have uh, gcp google cloud snowflake and people are like confused that what to do right especially at entry level how to start even there are some people who are you know data analyst or bis or business analyst and they want to move to data engineering right and they don't know exactly what to do right so what so let's divide into two things what are the basic things that they need to learn and then okay. what is the intermediate and advanced level things that they can do in 3 4 months right generally people will lose you know temper after 3 4 months if it is goes goes beyond that right so if we can have a good road map that people can follow it will definitely help them okay great uh, ankit because the question which you asked is honestly asked by a lot of people to personally on my linkedin and various places to me as well that people wanted to get into this data engineering and there is a lot of too much information is also a problem so this is right. what exactly is happening so let's keep the thing very simple if i talk about the prerequisite the two things which is very basic is needed for any of the data professional i would say data engineer data scientist uh, uh data engineer data scientist or data analyst whatever you want to talk about two things which is common is first is your sql so by default you need to know the sql i think you have ankit which is like one of the best person to teach you the sql so i think uh, you are in the right hands if you are following him for the sql stuff so he will take care of your sql which is needed for becoming a data engineer or for becoming a data scientist or analyst so first thing sql and when we talk about sql also it's more of like a practical aspect like you know how to write the query you know how to get the data or get the work done from the sql that is what needed second thing i feel is be, at least basic level of python is needed very basic even if you know how to iterate uh, how to make a for loop how to use if else how to use list arrays and all 
So if you know that basic, even if you don't know NumPy, Pandas, it's fine. It's fine. But at least basic level of that programming of Python is needed. So that because later on, when you get into the data science or data engineering, especially data engineering, then uh, you might need to use it into the Spark. So these are the two prerequisite, I would say, like if someone who is coming into the data engineering world, he has to have these two basic things. So once you cover this basic thing, then we talk about what needed to become a data engine. So I would say that this is prerequisite, basic of SQL at least and basic of Python. Okay. Right. So now, Deepak, one we, minute, Let I, I, yeah. I will interrupt a little bit. Yeah. So on Python, I want to add a few more things, right? Mm -hmm. So for around initial years, six, seven years, I, I didn't know about Python. You know, okay. I was mostly into ETL, data integration and all. But first time when I learned Python, it blew my mind. You know, there are two reasons for that. Okay. One is it is simple to simple, very simple to learn. Very, very simple syntax. You know, unlike Java, where you have you have to have purely object oriented Java, but it is not like in Python, right? You don't have to every time create class objects. So it is very easy to learn. And the the possibilities are endless. You know, once you learn Python, you can apply for data analyst for machine learning, AI, whatever, data engineering, everything can be done using Python. So if you someone is in data field, you know, and if they don't know Python, I feel they are missing a lot of things, you know. Exactly. So SQL, Python, these are mandatory no matter in which data profile you are. Exactly. And even people worried about little bit of the programming because the when the people come in, they say that how much programming is needed. So I feel that even if you are in data science or data uh, engineering space, still I feel 80% of the work will done eventually by your SQL and maybe for 10, 20 percent you need a Python. But again, that is crucial to know. But again, it's still most of the data profile is, I mean, SQL uh, uh, weighted. So you can say that the major, major chunk of the work will come into the SQL configuration and then the third thing would be Python. That's what I feel in most of the uh, things and second thing also which I wanted to point out uh, or highlight right now is that the world is moving towards a no code or a low code so right. majority of the tools and technology which you see is coming forward now does not need you to write huge amount of a code like 10 years ago the technology comes like which which expect that you write a lot of code maybe Java Spring Boot hibernate all that but nowadays you think about all the tools and technology they try to squeeze the code as much as possible that's what the world is moving towards like a low code or a no code so you don't have to worry too much because new tools whatever is going to come is eventually will have a very very less amount of coding needed that's what i feel right and one more thing i would add is see if you know the basics nowadays we have bart and chat gpt so it is not that if you don't know anything you can use it at least you should know basic of Python. And then if you need help, you can just ask chat GPT. Exactly. That I want this. Can you write a code? And your 70% work is done. You just have to test it, do some customization and that's all. So True. the main thing is learn the basics and it is not tough. People think coding is tough, but if you, if they go try it, learn it, I think it is easy. And best is Python. There's no other language easy as Python. I feel exactly. I mean, I think people who want to get into this data field, they need to get out of the mindset of this, the phobia of the programming or the code. Right. That is not the case. See, any day the coding which needed for application building or a web application or mobile app would have a higher level of complexity compared to the coding which is needed into the data engineering. Any day. Right, right. Okay, great. So this is the basic Deepak, yeah. right? Now, yeah. next thing in the mind is what they should learn next, right? Exactly. So there are too many exactly. things, too many yeah. things. Exactly. So that cloud, big data, yeah. snowflake, yes. right? So here, uh, yeah, exactly. So here comes the catch. Okay. So first of all, I would say that there are two things. One is on-prem. Another one is the cloud. Okay. Few years ago, there was nothing as such a demand in the cloud. So now if you want to get into the data engineering, I would simply say that don't just become a data engineer, at least become a cloud data engineer. So mm -hmm. at least you should pick at least one cloud. Maybe Azure, maybe AWS, maybe GCP. For example, I love Azure. So my views might be biased, but I feel that honestly, at this point of a time, out of these three cloud, if you are starting from the basic right now, 
I think best option is to choose Azure. Okay. Because yeah. of all the growth and everything. So assume that, let's say you choose an Azure, for example, or anything else. Yeah, so that's right. Yeah. And a one cloud. So first thing, you choose one cloud at least. Okay. Let's say Azure is, we have chosen. Now in that cloud, the first thing which you need to uh, do is you need to know the basic services. Basic means like storage, like it's if it is AWS, that is Amazon S3. If it is Google Cloud, cloud storage, or if Azure, it is will become ADLS or a blob storage. So those basic services, like uh, that basic horizontal service, I would say that you need to know. The first thing for the data engineering space would be the orchestration tool. So for example, if you want to get into the AWS, the tool there would be the Apache Glue. For example, if you want to do it in the AWS, sorry, Azure, the tool would be the data factory. So based on what cloud you choose, you can choose the tool accordingly. That is for the orchestration. So the first thing is orchestration tool. You, you need to know at least one orchestration tool. It could be either Airflow, Apache Airflow, Apache Glue, or mm -hmm. Azure Data Factory. Any one is fine. You don't need to know all of them. Okay. So let's say if I'm from an Azure world, I will choose Azure Data Factory. That is the number one. That is the orchestration tool. Number two, I need something which is doing the analytics. See, data engineering is cloud automatically club with the big data engineer. Right. People feel that big data is different. Data engineering is different. No. By default, when somebody says I am a data engineer, nowadays it automatically understood that he know big data as well. Right. Right. The second thing which you need to know is the big data technology. Now, in the big data technology, the good thing is it is cloud agnostic. So you don't need to worry about the cloud as far as this big data technology is concerned. In the big data, you have basic two things. One is Hadoop. Another one is a Spark. Okay. Hadoop, you need to put little efforts on the Hadoop to understand the basic because that is the uh, the base of any big data technology. So you need to know just basic. You don't need to write programs in the Hadoop or do it because Hadoop is more of a, like an obsolete, to be honest. So new projects, every project will be eventually in a Spark. Okay. Because the Spark is much faster than the Hadoop. Mm -hmm. So then you'd get to know the ba very basic of Hadoop and then you try to master the Spark. Now Spark can be run in a Scala or a Python. If you want to do it into the Python, then it will become a Pi Spark. Right. So you learn a Pi Spark or a Spark, whatever it is. Okay. So any one of them is fine. So let's say you need to know one orchestration tool that is ADF, Azure Data Factory in Azure world. Second big data tool you need to know, you learn Hadoop basic, and then you try to master your Pi Spark. Because writing in the Python is makes sense because Python easy to know, learn. And eventually you are building your base for data science, AI, ML future as well. That is also a Python uh, dominated. Right. So you run, you learn a Pi Spark. Now there's a one new thing that is a Databricks. But if you know Pi Spark, Databricks is almost 90% done because okay. Databricks is just used to run your Pi Spark code and give you the Spark cluster. So eventually, in my views, two things which is important after your prerequisite of SQL and Python, that is orchestration tool, ADF hmm. or Airflow or Apache Glue, any one of them. Second, is Spark. That is Pi Spark or a Spark, whatever you want to call. If you do these two things, you are almost 90% done. Now, I think after that, you have to add few small, small things in the bits and pieces. Maybe I learned Synapse side by side. I learned um, DBT or maybe I will learn some another tool, maybe Snowflake, something like that. But again, if I look at the core, core is somewhere around this. One orchestration tool plus second is your analytics that is like Spark, PySpark, or a database. See, most this cover most of the project requirement or a job requirement. Right. That's what I feel. Right. So, uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Deepak. So, this is really a short, very you know, roadmap, right? Like there are so many things, but people cover these two, three things apart from SQL and Python, they will be job ready or they have to do some projects or other things as well. See, now these looks like a short one, but when you try to go, at least when I take a course, to be honest, and teaching this for me, it takes three months to teach this as well. So this is not a short, it looks like a short, but when you go deep down it, you'll find it. There is a lot of thing to cover because actually 
end of the day you want to learn and you go for a switching and you make a you go for a job interviews now when you sit in the job interviews of the pi spark it it is going into the depth so you need to know cover it uh, in a well understanding i mean well you need to well understood all this concept okay so now coming to the project see in our it nobody will take you if you say that you are a fresher or you done some course or you learn from youtube etc and now let me take you no this is not going to happen so reason is you need to showcase some kind of a projects so then some real world project is important so either you do some research on google to get something or like a uh, lot of people are having the project courses like i have it so you can take the help of those courses to get some real world project so you try to practice them and then probably you in a situation where you can showcase that okay i know this this thing and these are the projects on which i personally worked upon and now i have a practical knowledge and then you can push your profile forward that's how uh, you can go forward okay great so let me summarize it quickly deepak so yeah. basically we need to learn sql python right we need to pick one cloud right great azure aws or anything and then we have to learn also spark basics of hadoop plus spark right yeah. plus that, one orchestration tool ha ah, yeah one or orchestration tool right yeah. and then we can do some projects yes okay? that is the high level road map and exactly. i think in four months it can be done i mean as well as python someone can learn i think in two to three months and another two months for this i think yeah. so i think five six months road map it will be right yeah. easily doable yes okay okay deepak one more thing like lot of people reach out to me and maybe they would have been reaching out to you so they are into the industry already three years four years five years so maybe 10 years of experience and they are into like data analyst role bi roles business analyst roles right and they want to move into data engineering right now they have some experience already they are not freshers right so how they can showcase that how that what data engineering work they have done right because no company will take them as data analyst to data engineer directly right mm -hmm. so they have to show them they have to learn first thing is they have to learn but also they have to show them that we have done some data engineering work without doing it right exactly so how to crack this code <laughs> so to be honest i think there you need to be little creative and little smart to be honest so first of all all the listeners who are a data analyst dba sql developer etl developer etl tester i must say that all of you are 50% data engineer already because data right. engineering is about all this playing around data and you are doing it maybe using a relational database or whatever it is but you are already 50% data engineer what you guys can do is you you learn this technology which the road map which you talk about you learn it and then you can convert your current project itself into a data engineering project okay right. so i mean i am quite popular in doing so in my community so i i always open up to the project and i say that let's bring the project and i convert your project into data engineering one so eventually uh, you can convert your project into data engineering one itself like data engineering is about what you have a multiple data sources from there you are getting the data and you are retrieving all this data using orchestration tool and then on top of it you are doing some analytics and you create a some uh, gold layer tables or aggregate tables which is used by all those power bi and data analyst one right so that's what a, basically your data engineering project look like mostly so you convert it little bit once you understand the technology you will understand how you can convert it as well so you do that and i would say that you smartly projected that okay in the same project you also played a role of a data engineer as well see you have to tweak a little bit so that tweak you can do it and then you can surpass this uh, bar barrier of like having a zero experience as a data engineer and then i think it will work out right so many people think it is fake should we do it or not i feel it is okay right see, i i i personally always feel that you are getting paid for your knowledge okay right. and somebody is not just taking you because you put down the project somebody is still going to uh, 
do the, all the scrutiny. They will ask you all the question. They will try to test your knowledge. And once they are convinced, then only they are going to give you right. the job, right? So it's completely fair. If you're passing that interview, it means that that is showcasing that you have that caliber. And eventually you will be able to deliver it as well, right? Because you have learned it. You are honest about it on your learning. It's nothing like you are somebody else is giving you the interview. You are the one who is giving it. So I think that that's a fair call, I would say. Okay, great, great, Deepak. Okay, so Deepak, last topic for today. So now let's say someone has worked hard five, six months and they are into data engineering. So getting a job is one thing, right? Now, once you are into the organization as a data engineer, it is not just about technical skills, right? So we will discuss about that, how someone can succeed in a role like data engineer in an organization, right? Like communication skills, soft skills, business knowledge. So can you give some overview about it? What okay. do you think? Yeah. Great question, uh, Ankit. So getting the job is a is a one step and making a long run career in that and as another step. So as Ankit has pointed out, few things which is pretty common, you should all do it. Like you should have a good communication skills. Like you should have a better understanding of the domain. Okay. So you try to understand the thing. The third thing which I pointed out would be is because here we are into the cloud world. Okay. So one important thing would be the cost. So you little bit be more innovative. Okay. You, you need to think one step above everything. See, delivering the business functionality is not the only the goal. You do and you do the one step forward to succeed or to surpass all your uh, the peer um, peer pressures and all the peer employees by making your code more optimized, which can run faster, which can save more money. You design a solution which can be highly scalable. So getting data engineering is one thing. Now, slowly you need to try to move it to the next level, maybe like an architect. You need to increase your thinking to that level where you can give the cost-effective solutions, scalable solution, well-optimized solutions. And you try to be in a situation where you can innovate. Or maybe if you are little still more have a bandwidth, probably you can little bit keep your eyes and ears open around what is happening in IT industry in data field. Like if some new tool are coming, you get a little, little bit high level idea around it and see like, can we incorp incorporate that? And can we using that, can we add on the value? So something like that, you can do it. So that's what you, your roadmap should be. Like once you get into the profile, you keep on still uh, upskilling yourself and fine tuning all those things. Right, right, right Deepak. I would like to add one more thing on the communication skills. I think one of the most, most important thing to succeed in an organization. So a lot of people confuse that communication skill is all about speaking good English. No communication skill is there are two level of uh, communication skills. One is, I think you communicate what you want to communicate. It is okay. If your English is not very good, just basic English, but you are able to communicate what you want to say. That is one thing. Second communication is there is no communication gap. So for example, I have committed that I will deliver something by next Friday, right? Now it is possible that I uh, complete that work and deliver on Friday. And it is also not, it is also possible that I am not able to leave, deliver for whatever reason, right? So it is, it is very important to communicate to the stakeholders that we are not able to deliver this on this Friday because of so and so reason. You can't just sit back exactly. after committing that you committed, I will deliver on Friday and you are just sitting and no communication, right? And exactly. Monday client is coming back or customer is coming back that what happens, right? So that is blunder, you know? So if you communicate on time, if on Thursday or Friday, you communicate that we won't be able to deliver it, client will understand it is okay. But if you are quietly sitting, that, that doesn't make sense, right? Yep, exactly. So you're, you're, you're very rightly said because of what you said, uh, Ankit, this I've seen many times and it generally happens. Most of the people who are little new into IT industry, like who has a fresher or one year, two year experience and they, because of a little bit of fear of like what their manager will say and something like that. So they end of the day, we get all get like a last minute surprises. So ideally we all should avoid that. So it's better to bring the bad news as early as possible rather than right. towards the last time. <laughs> so that can help to mitigate the risk or at least 
there can be some work around possible we can look for that work around so i think that that is a very good uh, suggestion from the ankit thank you so much ankit yeah another thing i have observed is deepak like let's say you are working on something and you are stuck right and you are just struggling with with it struggling 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 and not reaching out for help and when the time is near then you will reach out right and that will you know the deadlines and all will be in trouble right so exactly after some time you should reach out for help it is yes. okay some people will be will not reach out for help they will think that what others will think i am not able to do it this that doesn't matter in the end it is all team work right if you are exactly. able to deliver the projects that's your success it doesn't matter you do any one else do or you do together with the help of each other anything is fine no need of shame or anything right exactly and you rightly said but there is a very thin line actually ankit i mean see you cannot be someone who always go for a, uh, asking it and right, you cannot right. be someone who is not asking at all so you i mean someone who is listening this has to make their own line that okay they will understand that it shouldn't be that too frequent or like a, uh-huh. i mean without trying you go always and asking for help that that also should not happen so right, right. you need to be a very uh, careful about it that okay you have put your genuine efforts and you feel that now this is costing the project now because if i don't do it that moment i think you should go and ask for all the help right right great deepak thank you i think i think we have covered lot of things uh, i hope this helps help people uh great thanks for joining us today thank you ankit uh, thank you so much for calling me in hope every quarter or every six months we can do a road map with, with <laughs> with new technologies and definitely up- and i feel like at some point of time i want to be on the other side where i should go and ask the questions to you because definitely. you also have a lot of knowledge so i i think people will love to hear you as well so yeah, we'll do, we can we'll do, do that as well sometime thank you divak thank uh, you have a good thank day you. thank you thank so you much. everyone thanks thank you everyone bye bye